Hello everybody, this is Dr. Brandi Maynard. I'm here today to talk to you about gifted students and gifted education in the Idaho Virtual Academy. This PowerPoint was created by the National Association of Special Ed Teachers. I do not belong, um, but it was adapted by me, Dr. Brandi Maynard. I want to talk to you about the definition of giftedness and then also go into gifted versus bright. And this is a question we oftentimes get asked in the Virtual Academy. And we really, in the Idaho Virtual Academy, want to cast a wide net. We want to get in students who are gifted and bright into our program. We have about 10% of our population that's being served in our Virtual Academy. And that's the number that we're striving for. If we go over, that's great. Um, we do want to cast a wide net and bring in students who maybe the curriculum isn't quite fitting and the learning coach needs a little bit more support from somebody who knows gifted kids. There are three of us on staff, myself, and my background is in gifted and talented education, as well as Carly Thompson and Lisa Frost, who also have have endorsements in gifted and talented education. Now, giftedness can be defined as children or youth with outstanding talent who perform or show the potential for performing at remarkably high levels of accomplishment when compared with others of their ages. So you may have read parenting books when you had, when your children were young and you were thinking, okay, this is not talking about my kid. Or you might have been part of play groups and you're thinking, this has nothing to do with my child. My child's reading Harry Potter at five. I don't know what to do. These are the kind of kids that we want to help. And like I said, we're casting a wide net. So we want to help all students who are performing above their age level, age level peers and the curriculum or the methods that they're trying just don't fit them properly. And gifted kids can be gifted in different areas. They can have high performance capability intellectually. So those may, may be like the kids who always win Jeopardy. They might cre be creative where they're outside and they have their own little world. Maybe they have imaginary friends. They might be musical or artistic. So the music curriculum, they're beyond that, or the art curriculum, they're beyond that. They might possess an unusual leadership capacity or excel in a specific academic field. So they might be out on um, in the neighborhood and leading groups of students in games and things that they've created and made up as a leader, or perhaps they're gifted in just reading but not math, or just math but not science. So there's they can be gifted in a specific academic area as well. They require services not ordinarily provided by the school. These are the kids we're looking for. If you feel like your student is excelling and you need a little bit extra help, that's what we're here for. These are the kids that we want. And like I said earlier, we have about 10% of our population that's gifted. Generally in traditional brick and mortar schools, it's about two to 5% of the population that's gifted. And in those schools also, they usually don't allow gifted kids to be quote unquote gifted until third grade. We have bring kids in from kindergarten on up. So if you ask a teacher who the gifted kids are, they're likely going to point out to the bright kids. And the bright kids are the kids who are teacher pleasers. They're the ones that are doing it and getting their jobs done. They're the ones that teachers like to be around. Gifted kids can be a challenge to teachers. Um, sometimes it looks like ADHD, but it's not because they're just not focused. And it's, it could be because very well that they're bored. But like I said, in Idaho Virtual Academy, we really want to serve all kids, all bright and gifted kids. So I'm going to talk to you about both types here today. So bright kids are usually a joy to teach. They rarely question the teacher, and you can read this all to yourself. Um, they stay on task. Our gifted kids sometimes don't do that. They like to spend their time daydreaming, thinking about something, writing their book, um, working on the things that are important to them, and that can be really frustrating as a learning coach, and we want to support you with that. They find that the constant repetition is so boring to them. Usually gifted kids get things in one to two repetitions where a bright student um, gets it in three to five and an average student eight to fifteen. So if your student's getting stuff very quickly we want to teach you how to compact through the curriculum. Bright students know the answer. Gifted students ask the questions. So they're the ones that are always saying I wonder I wonder what would happen with, if, what would happen if you did this to this? They're wondering all the time, asking those questions. A bright student enjoys group, enjoys group projects. 
Gifted students prefer to work alone, especially those who are highly gifted. They like individualized work. They like their own projects. Um, if they're highly gifted in the range of like 145 and above on an IQ scale, they tend to be more introverted than extroverted. So we're looking for kids that um, on both ends of the spectrum, the extroverted and the introverted. But like I said, being very um, nurturing of those introverted kids because oftentimes our highly capable kids tend to be more introverted. And generally siblings are within the same, um, on, this, on an IQ scale, they're within 10 points of each other. And they're usually within 10 points of their biological parents and grandparents as well. And bright students are very interested and gifted students are very curious. So a bright student might be very interested in what you're saying, and a gifted student is very curious. They have lots of questions in their mind about what it is that you're teaching them and what they're experiencing in the world. A bright student finishes their assignments and oftentimes do, does it very well. A gifted student may be reluctant, reluctant. They may be so creative that they like to play and do it their own way. They have a way that they want to do it. This oftentimes comes up in math. We see gifted kids who want to create a different way to do a math problem, and that's okay. That's the way that their brain works. The creativeness and inventiveness are the highest forms of giftedness. So if you have a highly creative student who perhaps didn't sleep much as a child, um, their mind is always going and they had imaginary friends, highly creative, you've got a highly gifted student. And it, the creativity is the production of new and original ideas. It's also it's ideas that can come from taking two completely different things and combining and putting those ideas together as well. I have a creative kid of my own, so I know what it's like to live with one. Um, it can be very, very fun, but also very challenging on the other end. The bright students, they answer the questions. The gifted students discusses in detail and elaborates on the answers and continues to ask the questions. The bright student is in the top academic group in the school. So if you have gone to a public school before, like the kind that we grew up in, you know how we had the different, the groups, the red groups, we like to call them, the bluebirds and the buzzards um, in our teaching college. Yeah, so they're in the top group. The gifted kids are beyond the top group. So they're beyond what's happening in those academic groups. If you get them around other smart kids or bright kids, they're beyond those students in many ways. And oftentimes that's difficult for them to find an intellectual peer, someone who really gets them. And that's what we do in our program. We help kids to get connected to intellectual peers who get them and also to teachers who get them. The bright students listen with interest. The gifted students show strong feelings and opinions. They have strong feelings and they share them with you. They're very democratic. They like things to be just and fair. And they have strong opinions about things that are happening in the classroom, in the family, in the world, and tend to be very emotional as well. So if something's happening over in a tsunami across the ocean, they're going to be very, very concerned about what's happening, especially areas that um, when you're dealing with injustice or war, all of those things that of course are huge but removed from us are very close and dear to the hearts of some of our gifted kids. Bright kids learn with ease, but gifted students already know the answer. And you think, where did you learn that? Where did you get that? They just absorb it, they just know, they're problem solvers. They can put two things together and figure it out. The bright student, we talked about this earlier, six to eight repetitions for mastery. The gifted student wants two repetitions for mastery. So they can pick things up very, very quickly. The bright student enjoys their peers. The gifted student is a little bit different. They prefer adults, older children, or seek out very bright gifted peers. So they look for people like themselves. And oftentimes they can't find that until they like search out people, oftentimes that are older than they are, that they can connect with. Bright students complete their assignments. Gifted students ignite and initiate projects. They have better ideas for how they want to spend their time. And so we help them to create independent projects and passion projects so that they can have um, those challenging um, experiences that they're yearning for. A bright student copies accurately. A gifted student creates a new design. So a bright student is very 
happy with pleasing you and copying the information accurately. A gifted student will completely change it up and create a whole new design out of something that, um, that you give them that's shared in the curriculum or even you have no idea about. A bright student enjoys school. A gifted student enjoys learning but may hate school. So you may get a lot of pushback, heels into the ground. They don't like what it is that they're learning or doing because in their mind they're not learning. They'd rather be out in nature categorizing rocks or working on string theory or writing their book. And so we talk to you about how to create pattern projects for your kids so that they can get what they need from the, from the curriculum, from what's being presented at school, but also on their own. A bright student is a good memorizer, and a gift student is an outstanding memorizer, but also often does so without trying. And this can be the case with math facts, maybe not so interesting. For some of you, it may be Bible verses or songs or chants. They are outstanding. And you think, how did you get that so quickly? And it doesn't even seem like they try. A bright student is very alert, and a gifted student is very observant, and they remember the fine details. So they'll bring up things that you thought, oh, how do you remember that? That happened when you were four. And I'm just speaking from experience a lot with with these students that, especially the highly creatives, because that's what I'm parenting in my house, but they just need to get things and watch and remember all the little things that you, you must have just passed me by. I'm not quite sure. The bright student is pleased with their own learning, where the gifted student is highly self-critical to the point of perfectionism. So you're dealing with a student who throws massive temper tantrums when something doesn't get right. He might or she might erase their paper until it is completely in shreds because it's not the way that they wanted it to be and that's very frustrating to them. A bright student enjoys straightforward and sequential presentation and a gifted student thrives on complexity and they need the whole picture. So they're whole to part learners where bright students and average students are more they like to see all the little pieces to make the whole and that's how they learn best. So what we need to do with gifted kids is we need to quicken the pace and we need to give them information a lot quicker and they're gonna think it's play. They're gonna really enjoy that. We need to broaden their range of experiences and give them lots of different experiences and that's what we do in our program with the different classes that we offer. We wanna give them challenging situations and we'll do that in our program as well. Giving them the chance to figure out complex and detailed types of problems and doing it in a way that they're, they're problem solving with other peers who are intellectual like they are. Creating projects that involve more creative thought and gifted kids tend to be creative. We're gonna give them a lot of creative problem solving strategies that they um, will be able to use. And it's really important to challenge them with questions where there are no correct answers. So you wanna give them questions like the one that's posed here that will just make them think and get out of the, um, you know, there were two apples and four apples, how many apples total? We want them to be able to practice those complex thinking skills. We also want to allow them to pursue independent and individual projects. And that's what we do in our program when we call them passion projects where they'll have an opportunity to work alone and with other kids on things that are important to them. And then the last one, teaching them how to play chess. Chess is a great game. It requires a lot of skill, concentration, strategic planning, and it's an ideal game to teach our gifted kids. Well, if this looks like it might be a good fit for you, please fill out the questionnaire that we sent. We would love to have your child. Again, we're looking for gifted and bright advanced learners. We call it the ALP program, the Advanced Learner Program, and their parents. We also accept siblings. So if you have a child who you think is gifted, but maybe the other one isn't, uh, we accept the whole entire family. And we would love to have you in, in our program. So please fill it out and we will do the nomination process. We we generally do fill up, so get your information filled in quickly and get it off to us, and then we will let you know whether you've been accepted by the end of the year. Thank you so much for your time and attention. I really appreciate it. And next year, Lisa, Carly, and myself look forward to working with you and your family. You take care and have a wonderful, wonderful summer. Bye, everybody.